How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Superhero Time where I am sitting down and recapping and reviewing every episode of Machine Sentai Kirameja. So this is episode five. This is a yellow centric episode, which um, there's, there's some elements, we'll get into that in just a second, of why I think this episode works and also why I don't think it works because it's following the, the last episode with uh, Princess Mabushina and <laughs> kind of everything that went on there with Juru and everything. I also just realized um, in between when I recorded the last episode and this episode that the name Juru is really just kind of like Japanese. It's basically just jewel, which you learn something new every day. <laughs> So the episode starts off with Tommy Tomo and he's, you know, doing another one of his esports things, even though I, I feel like he's always facing the same team. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's kind of like Gaim, they're always, you know, versus the same one. All during the, uh, the beginning parts of this episode, everybody is still like sh on Juru for not being a good leader, for not being, you know, up to snuff, which is weird coming from the last episode where he really did showcase a lot of those good elements, a lot of those good leader qualities as a Red Ranger. So it's weird to kind of see them take a step back where I feel like this episode should have come before, you know, Mabashina's focus and anything like that, or at least, you know, should have been excluded. It, it kind of feels weird like that one was just sort of thrown in there when, uh, you know, they're, they're still acting like this to him. But of course, there's a new Monster of the Week that shows up, and this one, because it's a Yellow's themed episode, it's a giant joystick for his face, like it's a controller, and when they try to shoot at it even to stop it, because it can control people and things, and obviously that's gonna be dangerous. But when they try to shoot at it, it doesn't break, you know, it's, it's the first controller that doesn't have cheap parts in it, or, you know, won't drift, um, which I thought would have been kind of a funny, idea for the episode is, you know, like he's, I don't, I don't know how they would have done that. Never mind, don't worry. But while all this is going on, they also have found three new Kirame stones that aren't fully at the same potential that the main five are, but they will potentially in the future be able to transform and, you know, do something uh, amazing like the other ones are. It's basically, you know, just another toy commercial. It's more, you know, toys you should probably go and buy. And I bet by the end of the episode, they're gonna, you know, transform. Spoiler alert, they do. Uh, I think his name's like Shovel Yellow. Sho uh, it's like Shovel and Yellow. Shavello. <laughs> he really wants Tamatoma to be the leader. He wants Yellow to be the leader because as he sees, he's possessing all these, you know, characteristics and all these qualities that a leader should have. And so he kind of tricks Juru into running off with him to go and meet these stones and transform them into something that he kind of, you know, has his hand in the pot for. And so Juru ends up creating three different things that kind of supplement and go with the shovel uh, shovel guy's motif and you know kind of like <laughs> he wants to form his own group where yellow is the leader but you know it, it you know, there's, it's it's kind of fun. There's some there's some good parts with that. But you know, in the beginning of the episode, they were warned that you know they can't, probably shouldn't transform them yet because you know they're they're not, I don't know, fully developed yet. They're not mature enough that you know something weird is gonna happen. Spoiler alert: nothing bad happens. But then we get to kind of sit down with Tommy Tomo a little bit, where he and Senna have this moment where she asks him like how he got into esports, how he got into video games, and there's this really touching story with his grandpa and how his grandpa, you know, would buy him these games and the the one day that he bought him the wrong game, he got really frustrated and upset with him and yelled at him and later that night he would have a heart attack and pass away and that was the last time that he saw his grandpa. And you know, that, that kind of story, it hits a little bit close to home for me and it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good touching story and it kind of just shows that they're willing to, you know, take the series towards that route early on, which is always appreciated when you have, you know, these story elements kind of helps you endear yourself to these characters a little more. It shows that they're a little more human and that they can become even greater and better heroes because of those mistakes. But yeah, on the on the hand with the new um, the new Kirame stones, I was wondering uh, because, you know, Shavalo, whatever his name is, he's saying like that they got to go find new partners. And so it's like, oh man, are we going to get like a huge cast? Are we going to, you know, end up growing this out with new partners? Or is it going to be kind of like, like Shinkenger or Goanger where they get, you know, new origami, new mecha, whatever, and it kind of gets, you get to control this one. Now you get to control this one, which I'm, it's probably going to be the latter if anything. There's not going to be more than than six heroes on this team. I'm pretty positive, you know, unless they do like a V-Cinema, there's 
uh, I don't see it happening. The end of the episode, they basically have to showcase to the Yellowstone that he, Juru that is, and he gets controlled and he ends up, you know, breaking out of that and saving Yellow even. And then we find out that the whole, you know, ruse that they were pulling was Yellow is actually controlling the monster's face, making it so that Juru could, you know, like do all these amazing things and make it seem like he's actually doing them. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, I like that idea. And they were able to do this because of the Gemini doll. And I'm, I'm so happy that this is like a staple of these first few episodes, that it's not just, you know, a one-time throwaway gag that they're using it again and again. I really appreciate that. You know, this episode didn't really resonate too much with me. There was a lot going on, you know, like with the whole Juru and you know, Yellow Kirame Stone guy just kind of having their little moment versus Tommy Tomo and like his moment. It just kind of gets put in the shadow a little bit, you know, the, the focus should have been there. Kind of like Shigeru's episode was all about him, you know, kind of juggling these things. Same with Senna, kind of juggling, you know, these responsibilities and these aspirations that she has. But then you get to, to, to Yellow's episode and it's kind of... I don't know, it's 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 not there. It's almost like he's being kind of shafted a little bit, a little bit ignored, you know, like he's... I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Maybe he, you know, gets a whole nother episode uh, later. But usually in Senta, you get about two focus episodes, if you're lucky. And this one, you know, I, I just wish it had more to focus and follow with him. You know what I mean? But the best part is with that Gemini doll, they, uh, they did the butt pass again. <laughs> That's two butt passes. Um, let's see how many times they do it for the show. I hope it's every time. That would be a, that'd be great. And then of course they have to do you know like a gatai, and they put in this monster that's kind of like a gacha machine. So, you know, it's got like the little crane arms and everything, and that's fun. And that's when our new Kirame stones show up and help save the day. You know, as I knew they would. It was it was pretty obvious they were going to. But yeah, this episode. Uh, it's okay. You know, I, I was thinking about getting into like a rating system out of 10, but uh, I, I don't know, that, that doesn't sound too fun to me. But um, yeah. Our comment of the episode comes from episode three's recap with uh, Vust Vallejo, who says, I wonder how Kirame Blue reacts if he met the Shinkangers. That's what I would want to see. I love when they do, you know, the crossover, the V cinemas, um, and they take, you know, this year's and last year's and they put them together. But I feel like, you know, outside of just like the the, the similar themes like dinosaurs, they should really kind of have like these fun crossover events, you know, like where they just pit, you know, random teams together, random, you know, person from this team. I don't know, I think that would be kind of cool to kind of reinforce it and kind of add them back into the story, even if they're only in for like an episode, you just have, Chiaki from Shinkenger show up and I don't know. I think that would be cool. I think that would be fun to do that. You know, every season have like one or two. You don't know who it's going to be until they show up. I don't know. I think that would be kind of cool. But yeah, what did you guys think of this episode? Leave your comment down below. And if you're enjoying these, be sure to check out Patreon. On Patreon, you have access to, since I'm playing catch up right now, the episode or two that will come out after this, you have access to that early. And of course, every video that goes up on this channel, you guys get access to early. So if you're liking these and you wanna check out the next one right away and you don't wanna wait, that's where you can find it. But that's all that I have for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys aren't spoiling it for anybody. You know, let's not talk about next episode. We'll save it for that episode when we get there. All right, everybody, have a good one. Bye.